let's do something fun and before we we get into what i want to actually do there's something that i haven't taken the time to do yet and that's actually to talk about the CONCACAF last match day i haven't yet talked about it because it was late and uh, you know you know what it is you know we, we know we know the teams that are going to qualify and everything and the team going into the playoffs but i want to just touch on the last four matches in the octagonal I, I i have to talk about those games briefly i did not watch the mexico el salvador game but um i want to touch on all <clears throat> four matches briefly while we wait for the draw we have some time it's 11:51. The draw ceremony starts at 12, my time, local time, noon. Maybe for some of you guys, it's about, I don't know, five hours later or five hours earlier, three hours, you know, so I don't know what time it is in your part of the world right about now, but where I am in New York City, it's 11.51 a.m., and I think that's the time across the entire Western Hemisphere, if I'm not mistaken. So, look. Mexico 2, El Salvador 0, Uriel Antuna in the 17th minute, Raul Jimenez in the 43rd. I did expect Mexico to win this game on home soil in front of their fans and book their place in Qatar. If you look at the stats, they had 18 shots at goal, 6 on target, 56% of the ball. Compared to El Salvador, 7 shots at goal, none on target, 44% of the ball. So... L3 will be back at the World Cup, 28 points, 12, um, 28 points, um, second, I don't know why I said 12, 28, <laughs> 28 points for Mexico at the end of the octagonal, they finished second, and I know the fans will be disappointed that Mexico finished behind Canada, but this is no indication on how the teams would actually do at the World Cup, okay guys, so don't forget that, but well done, Mexico, on making it back to the big event. And they will be looking to get past the round of 16 this time around. So, hard luck to El Salvador. I think they put up a good fight. And they do, you know, have a nice little squad there that they could build on for 2026. So, 2026 is the goal for El Salvador. And that for them to be back at the World Cup for the first time since 1982. So... Good luck to El Salvador. I think Hugo Perez did a great job with the team. As for Tata Martino and Mexico, I don't think they, they did a great job in qualifiers, even though they qualified handsomely. You know, you, you get what I'm saying. They, they weren't impressive whatsoever. Jamaica 2, Honduras 1. Jamaica, they won two games during World Cup qualifiers, and both wins came against Honduras. Astonishing. <laughs> Astonishing astonishing i don't know that word came out very very wrong but um that's crazy that is crazy that jamaica only won twice and they came against costa rica um honduras home and away but you got to give it up to the jamaican team though they were brave after going behind via penalty leon bailey's penalty goalkeeper got a hand to that but Ravel morrison scored a good goal in the Second minute of first half, extra time there. It was a very op open game of football. Both teams had their chances. I think, um, I like what Honduras did at the back end of World Cup qualifiers by actually experimenting and looking forward, you know, to the future by introducing some fresh players, local based players and all. And for Jamaica, you could see them doing the same. You could see them actually moving on from a few players I, I i don't know if guys like kimar lawrence is like injured but he didn't take part in in the last couple games so jamaica looking to look ahead to 2026 and both teams looking ahead to 2026 as well because both teams failed miserably to qualify for the world cup as you guys could see the table jamaica sixth you know it's 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 a it's respectable finish in the fact that they finished above El Salvador and Honduras, but I think they would have liked to be a bit closer to the likes of Costa Rica, Panama, and the USA in terms of points. They, they did not compete. They really didn't compete. So let's see if Paul Hall will stay on as the, the, the head coach. There's signs that he will because, you know, he did pick up a win there and 
think Jamaica did pick up a draw as well in the previous match. So, um, you, you know, so it's it's not not the previous game against Canada, but um, let me let me just pull up the whole Jamaica thing in front of me here against El Salvador. They did pick up a draw, so four points in that window. And those are the only four points that Paul Hall pick up while in charge of the Jamaican team. So, uh, positive end to proceedings. But they got to look to 2026. And, and in my opinion, in my opinion, I think it's going to be very difficult for Jamaica in 2026 as well. I think it's going to be very, very tough. Because with Canada, Mexico, and the USA most likely to take three out of six places... You still have Costa Rica, Panama, El Salvador, Honduras, Curaçao, Suriname, Haiti, Trinidad and Tobago, Montserrat and Co. You know what I mean? St. Vincent and the Grenadines. <laughs> Not at all. To deal with. You know what I mean? So I think it's going to be another uphill battle for Jamaica. So big up to the boy Demo Dre in the house. Big up to Richard Neves. Big up to Lechu, I am Gamer, Adam Mendel, Lucid King, everybody in here. Everybody you see commenting right now is a subscriber of the channel because only subscribers could comment. And guys, we hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel, man. That is a big, big achievement because not many people doing YouTube, whether it's football, fashion, tech, whatever you, you may have, they don't get to 50,000. And... It's a, it's a big achievement. I'm not going to try to downplay this achievement whatsoever. Because it's a great achievement, man. And let's see if we could get to 100K. Don't think it's going to happen. But um, if I put out the, the work, it, it might happen. Definitely might happen. So AD45 is saying, I remember when you had 6K. Yeah, before the World Cup started, I can't remember how many subscribers I had. But... I had less than 5,000 in 2018, so, you know, channel have grown in the last four years. Maybe to the 2026 World Cup, we might actually hit 100, so let's see if we could achieve that. But thank you very much, everybody who's actually congratulating me right about now. So, yeah, Montserrat don't even have enough people to fit into a stadium, LOL, I know, a championship stadium. But, yeah, they've, they've been competing in CONCACAF, though. Big to the boy avj one two three who's been around throughout the whole journey man thank you very much for sticking around man i do appreciate it and guys let's touch on the other concacaf games really quick so i'm not gonna get stuck talking about concacaf when the draw starts so look panama one canada nil big up to panama for picking up that victory over the octagonal leaders Canada, who did not finish World Cup qualifiers very strongly, they did lose to what? That was what Costa Rica did lost to. They beat Jamaica four nil, and they um they lost to Panama. So not a very strong finish in Central America whatsoever. The two previous games in Central America against. El Salvador and Honduras, they won those games, but they weren't able to get the better of Costa Rica and Panama. And I would like to say that Canada was very unlucky not to get something from one of, you know, both those games. Because they did put up a good fight, they did have chances, but just for some reason, the ball evaded the back of the net. So, this game, Gabby Torres, man, I think that was Jose Luis Rodriguez, who put in that ball at the far post and Gabby Torres who has over 100 caps for Panama, ran onto it and put it in the back of the net past the, the second keeper, Cripo. So Canada already qualifying. They did switch up the team a bit. They had guys like Kone in the middle. Atiba Hutchinson played at center back. Lucas Cavallini started. So it wasn't a full-strength Canada team. It wasn't. It really wasn't. And that's no excuse for Canada but it wasn't a full strength team. You know what I mean? I'm not making any excuses for Canada at all. And wasn't the full strength Panamanian team either. Were players who were on the fringes and not being involved in every single game got their opportunities. But strong finish by Panama. 
they finished four points short of both costa rica and the usa and they will be very disappointed in that because they had a good momentum going for them and they barely missed out so they will be looking forward to 2026 where canada will qualify as one of the co-hosts but panama will have to fight for one of those three available spots and there's also going to be two teams going into the playoffs for two more spots for the 48 team world cup in 2026 i am looking forward to that world cup because i'm going to actually work on going to some of those games i'm really going to look you know maybe the game in jersey if pennsylvania you know gets um one of those bids maybe washington even drive over to ohio you know what i mean boston man's gotta do what a man's gotta do but you know i want to go to some of those world cup games man so yeah 2026 so congrats to canada on qualifying for the world cup for the first time since 1986 under john herdman there and hard luck to panama not making it to back-to-back -back events after debuting in 2018 they almost made it they almost made it and the game that we all been, you know, that I've been waiting to talk about is Costa Rica 2, the USA nil. I have to say, the USA ought to be ashamed of their goddamn selves for this performance. Because Costa Rica and Luis Fernando Suarez, I think they really did not care too much about this game because they had already basically qualified as the, the the team going into the intercontinental playoffs panama couldn't catch them and they couldn't catch the usa unless they beat them six goals to nil the usa dominated possession in this game 15 shots six on target 66 percent of the ball but could not score kill on in goal to the rescue he was later taken off alvarado came on but the highlight of this match is the fact that Luis Fernando Suarez switch out the entire team. Only only a few guys actually stayed in the eleven, and from from just looking at the team, Kendall Waston started, and all the other guys pretty much were youngsters. It was a basically an under twenty one team, and on and a few guys were 24, 25 years old, but an under twenty one team. I have to give notable mention to a player by the name of Jewison Bennett. He's only 17 years old. Jewison Bennett. Listen, when we thought that the future for Costa Rica did not look good, we thought the future did not look good for Costa Rica, there they go putting out this very youthful team and beating the USA two goals to nil. I was like, what the hell am I seeing here? Juan Pablo Vargas in the 51st minute and Antonio Contreras in the 59th minute. Some good goals as well. You see what I'm saying? Very, very good goals. So, got to give it to Costa Rica, man. Contreras is only 22 years old. And for Juan Pablo Vargas, who is a defender, the, listen, he's 26 years old. He's one of the more experienced ones. But... There's guys 18, 17, 19 years old on this uh, on, on that team, and they beat the USA. Listen, Ricardo Pepe, you gotta step your game up, or else you won't be going to the World Cup. I'm I'm listen, song's harsh, but Pepe has fallen off big time after a great start. <laughs> I don't know what got it into Pepe. Maybe he's in his own head. Pulisic, Weyer, these guys gotta step up when they go to the World Cup, man. You know what I mean? The USA put out a fairly strong eleven. And they got beaten by Costa Rica. Look, I have to say, in the previous game where Costa Rica were, were beaten by the USA in the USA, they were criticized for being too slow, too old, too lethargic. And I think they turned the tide by actually saying, hey, okay, we're too old, we're too slow. Here you go. Take this. Take these youngsters. These guys are talented too. Take these youngsters and, you know what I mean, they got beaten. They got beaten, you know what I mean? So, well done. Great strategy. So, the draw celebration or the, the ceremony has started. 
there's a performance you know I, I won't get to fully enjoy the performance only visually but I won't get to actually you know listen in on the performance because I don't really want to play with that whole copyright issue I'll be fine I think if I play the sound but I don't really want to play the sound so that's what's up for CONCACAF I did not actually talk about CONCACAF before the you know the, at the end of these matches so um congratulations to canada mexico and the usa for qualifying and for costa rica for to make the playoffs to face new zealand panama jamaica el salvador and honduras all miss out and we'll have to look towards 2026 and beyond